in this part two of my discussion uh, with Harsha and Catherine, the Pauline de Nepati podcast, we continue our discussion of their favorite films of Malayalam cinema of 2022. <laughs> In this uh, part two, we talk about two Mamuti films, Pala and Bhishma Parvam. Pala and Bhishma Parvam. All right, Harsha, what is the next film that you would like to highlight from 2022? Um, I am going to go from feel good to do not feel good. Uh, Puru, <laughs> uh, which is uh, directed by first time director Athena. She she's uh, used to be an assistant director um, on and a film on uh, Uyere was one of the films that she assistant directed on, um, starring Mamuti um, and, and, uh, and Parvati. Uh, so the thing that drew me in, first of all, was that uh, these two people who had a uh, very public um, um, sort of, con uh, not directly, but uh, had a very public disagreement about the, some of the content of his previous films and in some of the misogynistic yeah. dialogues that were in his previous films, um, that they're playing siblings in this film. Mm. And uh, and the casting of those two ha is so perfect because... Um, it, because that hangs over that in the Kasaba incident hangs over this film in some ways, um, because he plays this um, this police. I guess he must be retired now because he he. I've never seen him at work. Um, so he plays a, a police officer who is a Brahmin, and he is a single father. His sister is played by Parvati, who is married to a theater artist, and. Um, it's implied that he is from a lower caste, uh, definitely not a Brahmin, and so he, they they uh, they end up living in the same uh, building in the same uh, and with flats in the same building, and there's this there's this uh, overwhelming tension and throughout the mm. movie that um, you know I I was you know kind of all, all like my neck was <laughs> tense the entire time because you were waiting for um sort of the shoe to drop about about what's gonna happen um you know th this guy is clearly seething with anger about the fact that his sister has uh who was widowed m ended up going back and marrying uh ex and uh, the man she was in love with before her first marriage. And, uh, you know, she, she walked out on uh, her in-laws and her, um, and her birth mm -hmm. family to, to marry this man. And so, uh, uh, and he's a very oppressive person. He's, he's an oppressive figure to his own child who, uh, who has, a very strict routine, you know, during free period at school, he, he's not allowed to play any sports. He has to play chess. Um, mm -hmm. even if nobody else wants to play chess with him. Um, and, and he's, he, and this child has a strong connection to his aunt. Um, and so the child kind of becomes this sort of, uh, in some ways, this connection that the, the sister's character, uh, played by Parvati tries to, um, you know, in some ways, try to reconnect with her mother, try to, uh, tries to, you know, understand, you know, maybe make, a, you know, maybe reconcile. Um, at the same time, this guy, uh, this guy played by Momudi is, is convinced that, that somebody is trying to assassinate him. And in the past, he's been shot in service. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so he, you know, he kind of, reverts to his cop ways um you know he's threatening people who he feel might have um might feel he feels might be the uh, might be responsible it ends up with the death of one of the men that he imprisoned in the past um th that the guy says is under false allegations um and uh, you know in the, in as in life everything is kind of just covered up for him um and so at the end uh we the we you know where we feel like the sister and brother are finally reconciling and i'm like oh maybe this this 
intense unease that I felt throughout this film. Uh, maybe that, that, you know, that's going to kind of dissipate at the end. and It's going to be maybe a happy ending. Um, he ends up murdering his sister and his brother-in-law. <laughs> And and what breaks him is the name that they're gonna give their dot their child their, that she's pregnant with, um, Nangyeli, who uh, will who is a social reformer from the 19th century. Wow. And, and so, uh, I really enjoyed you know that that you know as, as I said, Mamuti plays a oppressive figure so well. This is the kind of uh, malevolence he brings to other other films that we you know we can talk about um, whether that I'll recommend later um, and and so he he can play this malevolent character so well and you can you can you know almost cut the tension every time he's in a room with a knife um, and and um, my only complaint about this film is that the last ten minutes maybe a completely different plot line about who's trying to murder him um, yep. pops up. And um, I felt like it really destroyed the flow of the film. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of it might be because one of the other films I would recommend if you enjoy this film is Munaripa. And so I, I felt like the director didn't want this ending to be the same as Munaripa. Uh, Munaripa. So, and that's why there was an extra 10 minutes of a very different plot line happening. Mm -hmm. um, so the minute this, uh, he, you know, he uh, puts on that CPAP machine uh, in this film, he wears a CPAP machine to sleep. I'm like, oh, there's something going on with that CPAP machine. Cause he, he's, <laughs> he's angrier every time he gets up. <laughs> and, and so basically it's, it's that somebody is um, poisoning his CPAP machine. And it turns mm -hmm. out it's, it's the son of somebody he, um, you know, basically falsely imprisoned in the past, and and it ends with his death uh, by by the hands of this young man, um, yeah. which I felt was a very. I mean, I I really enjoyed the fact that there was this this um, who's trying to murder me uh, plot line going on because it wasn't quite it wasn't clear to me is something actually happening or is this guy's paranoia so uh, bad that, you know, he's imagining this, these assassination attempts. Um, so to, to have the young, uh, to have somebody actually, you know, show up and be like, I wanted to kill you um, at the end was, was a little disappointing, yeah. but it, you know, if you it cut off those last 10 minutes, amazing film. <laughs> uh, like, it's just so competently handled. Like, she never eases up on the tension of the film. Um, and if you like tense dramas, if you, what you like about the, uh, this film is the, the, the o ominous, um, lit, uh, um, you know, tone of the film. I highly recommend Bhudagalam from this year, uh, starring Revati and Shane Negam. Mm -hmm. um, and it has some of the same elements of a parent and a child in a home uh, without a lot of people around them to kind of um, intervene on, you know, in their behalf and help them uh, figure out this relationship might be being, uh, might be toxic. Um, and if you like, uh, uh, I, I, I mean, I, if you like Munaripa, I mean, if you like this film, you will really like Munaripa. Yeah. Uh, and Mamuti is a is a convict in that film, mm -hmm. um, and throughout the film, you 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 cannot believe this person could have committed those crimes right. until that last evil grin. Oh my god! <laughs> like this, I still have shivers thinking about it. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he, you're right. He does. He does that so well. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm losing my voice. Catherine, what is well, the next film? You, uh, go ahead. If you, I'm, I'm let, breaking in when you want, might want to uh, comment on this one. Let's, let's stick with Mamuti because, it, you know, I mentioned earlier, Mamuti is not having a very good year. Mamuti is having a very good year. Yeah. Um, I admire, and, I admire what Mamuti is doing with his career, his later career so much. I feel like I love it when someone uses their stardom for good. I feel like he has had films um, because he's attached his name to them because he's been a part of them. Uh, really interesting films have gotten made. I'm thinking about Perrin, but especially like it still blows my mind to that film. Um, I mean, that's a Tamil film, but 
Uh, just, I just feel like he he's still he's still got it, and and he also is doing interesting, interesting, different, offbeat kind of films as well. And we've we've talked on the podcast about how um, Mamuti has been more willing to take risks with mm -hmm. the new gen. Um, yeah. I mean, we do have, um, he has a film coming out very shortly with Lijo Jos Pelashiri. And apparently Moana has also signed a film with Lijo Jos Pelashiri. So that is kind of interesting. So maybe, you know, Moana is going to wake up. But, you know, Harsha, you've also said too, he really doesn't have to. He has a legacy of films that speak for themselves. But it, it is, you know, it is interesting to see two, um, two actors of this um weight who are doing very different things at end of career uh, or later career so let's talk about Bhishma Parvam which <laughs> I love this I love this film I really I, love I, this I film. loved it <laughs> loved it um it is actually um the number one grossing film of this year really I can imagine I've, why yeah yeah I, I you know I've mentioned on t on Twitter that top grossing can be a bit of a mixed bag and you know when i look across industries what tends to stick there are big massy films that will get people out to a cinema so you know but in malayalam cinema that's actually a little bit different there are a number of films here that are actually really small films that have done exceptionally well at the box office but bishma parvam is a big massy you know hero driven film very typical um, I think I read something like it's also the third grossing Malayalam film ever. Wow. Um, yeah. Probably wow. behind a couple of Mohana films. I'm going to, I'm going to guess that the first two are Mohana films, quite honestly. Um, but yeah. And it's uh, directed by Amal Nirad. And the film take, it takes references from both the uh, Mahabharata, um, because it, right in the title you have Bhishma, and yeah. um, also from The Godfather. And mm -hmm. Amal Nirad is very open about how those are two big influences on this film. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier about how we were supposed to not get this film. What we were going to get was Bilal, which is um, a sequel to Big B, which is a film that Harsha and I like very much. Um, and Big B was um, kind of a big game changer. It's from 2007. Um, in, especially in terms of um, style of filmmaking, cinematography, using like a lot of darker tones, how it used background music, uh, a lot of slow-mo action sequences. Um, and it was really exciting to think about, you know, many years on what might have happened for the sequel. I think it's still going to be made, but it, it was the pandemic that they were going to have like some international sequences and they couldn't mm -hmm. travel. So okay. Okay. they decided to make this film, <laughs> which is essentially has, you know, um, Mamuti plays Michael, who's the third son of the Andriti family um, in Kochi. Uh, he's taken over the, uh, the family business. He's a patriarch. We discover through the film that he was originally studying law, um, but he killed a member of kind of a rival family. His older brother was killed in retaliation. His the second older brother is kind of useless. So as the third son, he's the one who takes over um, and run things. And it's this huge extended family and they all live together. Yeah. Um, like the opening scene will remind you very much of maybe the wedding scene from The Godfather where they're having a first birthday party for one of the children in the family and everybody's arriving. Yeah. Um, and essentially, the film traces how this rivalry with the other family and also within the family, how that plays out. It's a massive extended cast. Yes. Um, yeah. Gorgeously shot. Uh, one of the things I mentioned on Twitter was um, Amalnir had started as a, as a cinematographer. And one of the films he worked on was a film called Black, directed by Ranjit. And when I watched that film, um, it's about 15 years or sure, so old, I mean, but you know, mid 2000s or whatever. Um, when I watched that film, I kind of thought, you know, we had Mamuti in middle age and the fight scenes 
felt a little sluggish. So, you know, fast forward to this film where we've got this amazing style, like that first fight scene where he oh, goes with God. his three, the three nephews to, to rescue the, his sister's husband is amazing. And yeah. it's, I mean, a lot of it is angles and they have like the slow-mo and then yeah. they speed it up and the angles with the shot. And my God, Mamuti looks so sexy. Yeah, it's it like, looks amazing. And so, you sent, you you know, sent me a video is, of the of the behind the scenes of the filming of that particular fight sequence. And it's amazing to see what it looked like at just normal speed and from, you know, like a regular, a different angle. And then the way that it's presented in the final film and like you, exactly the sexiness, the slow-mo of the action of Mamuti just kicking ass. <laughs> Was yeah. just, but it's not just it's not just the fun of the action sequences. It's the performance of Mamuti. We were just talking about he how he can have this menacing presence, and and this tension in 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 this film is, you know, here he is, whatever age he's supposed to be in this period film, but he's got near do well members of the family who are bristling at the fact that he's still in charge um, and, and in control of their lives. And, and then what all that unfolds and that happens and other unassuming members of the family who have just been fine to have their smaller place yep. then come forward. And it's amazing um, ensemble cast Again, I haven't um, published my review of it yet, but I was so glad that you recommended that I see this film. I've been playing catch up on um, all sorts of Malayalam uh, films this month. And just uh, like, for instance, uh, Salvin Shahir, a big fan, um, he's been not only amazing in uh, you know films like Kumbalangi Nights and shown different aspects not just comedic acting. I mean, he's known for being a comedic scene stealer, but um, what he showed in Bishma Parvam was a new side of him that I hadn't really seen him do in, in another film. Um, I mean, maybe there was another film that I missed that you can point out, but for me, it was seeing another shade to his acting that I really appreciated. And he's just one of the amazing yeah. supporting cast of this sprawling film. I was very pleased because the Wikipedia entry for this film had a family chart. Yeah. <laughs> and it was very helpful because when you say it's a big sprawling family and you're like, okay, wait a minute, who's married to who and who is who's like it, it yeah. is a lot. You said, I think that you'd watched it twice. And this is a film that I would like to watch again and see some of those opening scenes where it were introduced to different members of the family when at first we're kind of at sea and we're like trying to puzzle out, wait, who is a nephew? What, what, you know, who's married to who? And it is kind of confusing as, um, you know, who is an older brother, who is whatever. So uh, I, you get it. And, and it's so rewarding to have such a huge canvas of people because it is of the same scale of like the Godfather. And it, that's exactly um, what I was thinking as I was watching the film. Um, as well, it was just you know this sprawling family, and also just this uncomfortable situation where you have someone who is so powerful and in charge of everyone's lives, and then what happens when someone tries to, you know, who, who feels this sense of injustice, but yet, you know, <laughs> makes alliances outside of the family, and yeah, <laughs> it gets yeah, it gets really crazy. Well, one of the things I also really want to point out this film is they do have a dedication in the beginning to Nedi Muriveno and KPAC Lalita, who are both in the film, who play the grandparents of one of the characters, of the, the, the parents of the, the guy that Mamuti's yeah. character originally murdered. And right. they are, they're beloved. They both of them passed um, within the mm. last year, Nadia Mudiveno at the end of 2021 and KPAC Lalita early in, I think, February of this year. Yeah. Um, and it's not that they don't play negative characters, but I think they're both probably more broadly associated with some really lovely characters. Mm. And to see them play these yeah. really yeah. evil grandparents and just so menacing and it, it's it's also 
it's a little hard to watch too because you can see in the film how frail they are because mm, they were both yeah. quite ill at the end um but also you know what a lovely testimony to have these two actors as part of this film um yeah now i'm gonna cry <laughs> yeah, well i'd also like to, to highlight tom shine jacko who i've seen be excellent in so many different films and his career um but this kind of character that he's playing is one that he just seems to excel at. <laughs> like just, just playing someone who is both unlikable and also someone that you can't keep your eyes off. What is this guy doing? You know, I mean, he well, just, he, he's fantastic. And, and his brother is played by um, Farhan Fazl. Yeah. Brother of Fahad. Right. Just tossing that tidbit out there. <laughs> yeah. And the film is, the film is set in the eighties and, like the uh, particularly with Shine Tontaco's costumes, his shirt yes. and his, you know, his yeah. boots and so good. Like yeah. they really, they really made an effort to kind of put you in that period. Right. Um, love this film. <laughs> I mean, and it's not exactly uh, what we would call a women focused film, no. but, but I do think some of the supporting characters, while they're not, um, you know, as fleshed out as the male characters get to be in the plot, they're still interesting and they're not. Uh, so I, I appreciated that too. So yeah, I, I can't even recommend that film highly enough. It's, it was so fun to watch. Well, and we've talked about how big, massy hero centric films are, do tend to be more about the men and, yeah. you know, um, a steady diet of that is not what we all need, but you know, once in a while, well done. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend after people watch this, I would recommend that you seek out Big B and see where that style began. Um, but I'm also going to recommend Khalid Raymond's film from this year, Talamale, because again, it's a kind of a massy action mm -hmm. film. Um, it's literally Ballad of Brawls. And yeah. <laughs> at some point, I'm going to, at some point, I'm going to write an argument up that this is actually a rom-com. Um, I mean, it, it it shows like each friendship up between the men starts with a fight. Yep. And <clears throat> there was one particular friendship that it doesn't happen until very late on. And I was like, oh, that's going to be the exception. And no, there wasn't an exception in the end. That it was just showing this is how these men bond is that they yep. fight and then they become best friends after that. But it's also a story in which it's boy meets girl boy and girl start dating, boy and girl get engaged, boy and Merle, boy and girl plan their wedding, boy and girl break up at the wedding, and then boy and girl get back together. Right, yeah. I, I actually managed to see this one in theater, and I'm very glad I did. Oh, um, that would have been fun. It was a lot of fun in theater. I haven't rewatched it, so the test will be how I feel about it again when I rewatch it. But again, it's what you expect from a big, massy, hero-centered kind, right. kind of film. Yeah. Um, the, the men are the focus. There's lots of dishoom dishoom and, yeah. you know, very well shot and lots of fun. And Time Sean Jacko, again, playing that kind of uh, smarmy kind of character that he does so well. And Tovino Thomas giving us another great character. Like, I, I, I really, uh, I really enjoyed him in that film very much. All right, Harsha, back to you. Um, I would then... actually had some thoughts about Bhishma Bharam since oh, I did oh. I did end up watching that. Um, first of all, yeah, if you watch an Amalmir film, you're watching it for the style. Um, it's it's his you know kind of calling card. Um, and, and I was struck that he, you know it opened with that overhead shot of the auto driving uh, that the the mother and the da uh, daughter-in-law um and that it was almost the same as the opening shot um you know in big b where they're overhead uh, over the funeral there's a lot of um amal needed calling cards in this film so if you enjoy that kind of stuff um he's very good at it and he's almost yeah. you know that this is very kochi based which is also an, an, another amal needed thing um and I thought it was interesting that he said it in the 80s. Now, I didn't know if that was because he wanted the film to intersect with the um, Dawood Ibrahim D Company gang, which who uh, um, Sudev Nair's character, Bararajan, is the sort of the antagonist of the story, is a, is, is um, 
in real life, Bararajan was a part of Dawood Ibrahim's mm -hmm. gang. So I didn't, and and uh, Amal Nirad has this sort of ongoing obsession with calling uh, Kochi Chota Mumbai, which is like little Mumbai. So mm -hmm. he has this um, ongoing obsession with the Mumbai gangsters and kind of bringing them into his Kochi films. So uh, so there's, a, there's a, um, you know, this is just another one in his a little bit of uh, his mission to do that. And I just, I thought it was interesting that he brought a real life character who did not die in this way. Um, he was assassinated in the 80s uh, by Rajan, but I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't think it has anything to do with anybody in Kochi <laughs> in real life. Um, yeah, but it was a fascinating backstory and there was so much mythology involved in it that you definitely felt like there were there's going to be more films set in this uh, in this family in this I mean I feel like this is the same universe as uh Big B because there's a Kushinga yeah. family mentioned in this film and Big B is uh the main characters that are the Kushinga family. So uh, I feel like it might all be the Amalnida cinematic universe um and and you know a little bit uh you know call us to some things i noticed a uh shine tom chaco has you know had, had a, a bit of a drug bust in the past they you know they kind of leaned into it making him a cocaine yeah. user um he, he um he might be gay um which might somewhat explain his abusiveness towards his wife hmm. um they they uh, yeah. kind of yeah, contract sorry go ahead no i was just gonna say yeah that the the scene where he's uh teaching the dancers in the film that he's <laughs> saying how to do the body roll <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, and and you kind of see how Shine, Chan, Shine Tom Chaco's character is unfit uh, because he's you know kind of a layabout um, compared to Ajaz's character, uh, Sabin Shahir's character. But you also see them contrast in how they treat their wives. You yes. know, uh, uh, Shine Tom Chaco's uh, wife, he doesn't want her to work. Um, meanwhile, like uh, Ajaz's character, Sabin Chaki's character, he's encouraging her to go get her graduate degree. Um, you know, he, he, you know, he's in the kitchen while uh, help, uh, you know, cooking while, he, you know, Shine Tom Jacko's character is, you know, kind of ordering his wife around um, yeah. to get her meal. So th there's a lot of, you know, very, very simple juxtapositions but you know you, 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 it's such a big uh big film that um it it, it is helps to um you know nail these characters down a little bit yeah um i i enjoyed it um it, 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 as i said i i didn't pick it for one of my top four uh for a reason it's a it, it did not have the same impact on me that it seemed to have on you guys. And it did not have the same impact on me that Big B did. I was blown away the first time I watched Big B. Because um, I think at this point, we come to expect this a little bit um, uh, from Amal Nirad films. And if you like this, you should watch Malik, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, See, a big one. sprawling yeah. family with a godfather-like character played by Fox yeah. Fossil. Yeah, that's an excellent film as well. Look forward to part three, where we discuss several more films that were fantastic in um, 2022 Malayalam cinema, including Priyan Otatiliano, Natan Kaiskada, and a couple of other surprises.